Welcome back to Exotic Art Play Place, everybody. Thanks for joining in again. Today we are going to get into the next video in the series about supercar ownership and what that's really about. If you watched last Wednesday's video, you realize it was really about leasing versus purchasing outright. What's the best choice financially? So today we're going to assume you made your purchase and now it's time to get that car home. And then as well, once you get the car home, what are the first two weeks, month, even the first summer with your new supercar? What's it all about? And I'm going to share with you what some of those experiences were like for me, as well as what you can expect once you have one of these cars and what that feels like. So for me, when I bought my car, the car which purchased long distance, it was about a 12 hour drive away from my home. So I had to find either a couple of ways, one being ship it via shipper or courier of some sort, or just drive it home or possibly trailer at home. I have a truck, I was able to rent a trailer, so I actually decided to insure the vehicle, throw it on a trailer, an enclosed trailer, and drive it home with my pickup truck. Now, I did that, experienced a few things along the way. It was a good thing that I decided to ship it home versus driving it home because I experienced some hail along the way. We had some snow on the roads at some of the higher elevations because I had to tow it through the mountain passes. And then I ended up hitting a bat and a few other pieces of wildlife that sort of got in the way not to mention, what if there's fresh paving somewhere along the way, all of a sudden you wind up with fresh tar or whatever, what have you. So often you may consider just having it shipped via a truck or a transport truck. They will take care of the insurance, the transportation, and the car has to show up to your place in the way you expect it to. So anyway, I got the car home, I shipped it, I unloaded it in front of my house, and that's where the fun began. It didn't take very long for people all of a sudden to start showing up. I had the car on my driveway and it was interesting, all of a sudden you had neighbors that stopped by starting to talk and kids on their bikes stopping by to ask what kind of car it was, what year it is, what kind of power it has. So it really opened the door to a bunch of discussions and that's part of the fun with these cars is enjoying those engaging discussions with people. People that maybe are curious about these cars, maybe never had the experience or got a chance to drive them. So that's the first piece. That's the first thing you'll notice as soon as you get one of these supercars is conversations that great people want to have with you. So the next thing is your first great drive. So you check the oil, you check the fluids, you've had those discussions with people, you've got insurance, and now it's time for a maiden voyage in your supercar. Looks like we're going for a ride. So as you take the car out for the very first time, you notice that you look around because your, your senses are heightened, of course. You're looking around and you notice how many people start looking at the car or looking at you as you're driving around. You definitely have people stopping by to look. As you drive down the road, you notice people watching and looking, taking a second look. That's some things that I noticed right away was driving down the road and all of a sudden you get that person pulling up behind with their camera phone going, taking pictures and video or pulling up beside you. I actually had one experience, one of my early drives, where I was in the right-hand lane, turning right to get off the main road, and I just as I looked over to my side, whoa, I saw somebody there with a big camera and a lens right in my face, taking a shot of the car or me or, or what have you. So there's lots of that to be experienced, of course. That's one of the first things that you'll notice in your maiden voyage with your supercar. The next thing is, where do I go from here? Okay, it's fun to drive the car around. Well, I had my share of that. Then you start talking to others that have these type of vehicles. You can sometimes get engaged in the local clubs. There's lots of meets. If you really dig down, for example, like Caffeine and Octane, we had clubs here in Edmonton that run like that. And often if you engage some of those folks, sometimes you have to get ushered in. So a lot of times it helps to know somebody that's already in one of those clubs. But either way, it doesn't take too long to get set up to, to start attending some of those meetings. And that's where it gets really interesting. Now you really start talking to other people, great people often, about similar cars and similar attitudes. People that share the same common interest. Maybe they have cars like this. So you walk around and you see, you get a chance to really experience some really great exotic cars. I mean, some of the meets I've had, I've seen some really cool cars. For example, Aventadors, SVs. I've seen lots of Gallardos and Huracans and McLarens, 570s and 720s, lots of Porsches, Ferraris, 458s, a Special. I've seen lots of interesting cars in my time at some of these meets. And of course, that always makes it really, really exciting just to see and be behold some of these great supercars that often, you know, you start to take for granted because they are so expensive, but you see lots of people with these cars and you get to share some stories with these folks and it becomes quite exciting and quite interesting. So the meets are a part of this. In between time, 
where you're not just going for your drives on a Saturday night or those meets once in a while on a Sunday morning. And often there's local car clubs that get together, you pay a small fee and then you can sign up and essentially you do a walk down, do a safety check and take your orientation and then you're off to the races. You can essentially go racing. I know here in Edmonton, we have a small racetrack, Castro Raceway down here, just by the airport. There's a club that runs their track junkies that runs there often many Fridays throughout the given year. And you can get in on that. And now you can really experience your car firsthand on a racetrack. And really, that's what you wanna do. And my first experience, I went along with a great friend of mine named Ed Zadzora. He runs one of the best supercar maintenance shops in Edmonton here. And I went with him in his 911 Turbo. And the first time I went out to the track, we met up with another couple great guys, a couple of guys one guy named Ron, he has a, a great 458 Italia, a yellow one, and another gentleman, he has a Maserati MC12. You know, one of those ultra rare, almost hyper cars, if you will. More rare than just about anything else you've seen out there. Well, we would go out on these drives, and we all went down to Castro together and really got to experience some of the fun and frivolity. And now you get in these Porsches and Maseratis and Ferraris, and now you're starting to thread some of the traffic like a needle. It's a lot of fun, and then you get to Castro Raceway, in which case then you sign up you get in you do your checks you get your your wristband and then you're off to the races spending a day down at the track well this goes on and if you really want to get and, and have some real fun with your car it doesn't mean you have to drive the wheels off of it it just means you pay a small fee you go out there and you can drive your car maybe take it out for two or three laps it doesn't mean you have to wear your car out but i got a chance a real opportunity and, and you could too once you get involved and you own cars like this people often gravitate to each other and i had many many opportunities to to either drive or certainly ride along some really really cool cars I mean, I've been in Aventadors, I've been in 458 Italias a few times, I've been in Porsches. Actually, with a professional race car driver, was able to take me out personally in a 911, and I got to experience what it's like with a, with a driver that can really drive these cars. I've seen a lot of great cars on the track and got to experience. We've had P1s out there, McLaren P1s. And then it opens up a whole new spectrum of participating in events that are charities. And some of these fundraisers are there essentially to raise money for charitable groups and you know, people that need cash. You know, there's a lot of people out there that struggle or you know, in this case, kids with cancer. There was a lot of great fundraising going on to raise money, generate money for great causes here locally. It's always a lot of fun to, to support it in one way. Whether you, you pay, pay the money to go for a ride or whether you put your car in the actual fundraiser and then you give give people rides to generate money for that fundraising. That is really, really where some of the fun really gets in with some of this stuff. And that's where it becomes really exciting. You meet people, you share the experience with others. And then there's another experience. And I never would have thought about this. When I bought my car about five years ago, it was about four and a half, five years ago, I bought the Lamborghini here. I never even dreamed that I'd be doing this, what I'm doing right now today and YouTubing. And I honestly, I can only thank great folks like you guys that are supporting myself and channels like myself with cars like this. I know you guys have the passion and so do I. And that's why I wanna deliver some of this stuff for you guys, this content. But to have these cars is sort of the conduit to, to allow me to do that. And, and it's a place that sort of allows us to share the lifestyle with all of you guys out there. Because whether you're trying to do it to generate income or whether you just wanna do it to have fun or be part of social media, whether you wanna post on Instagram or Facebook or any other social media or YouTube you want to post regular videos whatever that looks like even if it's for fun it's fun to participate in these communities whether it be across the globe or whether it be just locally these really do open up lots of avenues for for marketing for fun times like that or even again as I say maybe you want to start a YouTube channel and start generating income off of that so I was probably like a lot of you guys maybe some of you guys have cars like this maybe some of you don't Regardless, it doesn't matter. If you want it, you can have it. And trust me when I say I never came from money in the background. I was poor. We weren't raised with a lot of cash. My parents had enough for food, but not a whole lot else. And to be honest with you, I never dreamed about having cars like this or being involved in this sort of community that I always dreamed of because I was always a car guy. Hey, Porsche, you want to race? Let's go, buddy. I really, really always considered a dream to be able to get into one of these cars, let alone own one. Just to see one up close and crawl into the seat was always a dream of mine. And then I finally saved up some cash, 
and now here I am driving these cars and it opens the door to a whole lot of things whether you want to do just advertising whether you want to do social media whether you want to participate in local fundraising or just have fun for a Saturday night drive. These do a lot of great things for you. But as they say, all good things must come to an end. And so the lifetime of owning a Lamborghini or a Ferrari or a Porsche, where does that go from there? What can you do after you've owned your car for five years, 10 years? Are you ready to move on? Is it time to sell it, buy a new one, upgrade? Is it time to just get out of it and say, you know what, I've had my taste of the supercar world and now it's time to move on. What is it for you? What's the next step? Well, guess what? Next video, guys, is the discussion about that. Next video, next Wednesday, you want to participate in because that's going to share with you some great information on the next step. You've owned your car for five years now. Where do you go from here? So again, if you want to see last week's video, the link right there, that's going to tell you all about the finance versus the leasing conundrum and how do you go about it? What's the best option or solution? A video before that, we talk about shopping for your supercar and that's in the link over here. So hope to see you guys soon and I really hope to hear from you down in the comments below. Catch you real soon. Catch you then. Bye-bye.